by participating in research, you help us doctors and scientists answer the big question. Your involvement helps us to come up with real world solutions to make healthcare better for everyone. So I'd like to invite Dr. John Donnelly to come up. The podium, Dr. Donnelly is an implementation scientist, which means he's someone that turns real, world, real research into real world solutions for patients. John, I'll let you come up. Thank you very much for having me, and, and thanks so much, everybody, for being here. Um, so, so I, I, uh, like Dr. Hayek mentioned, so. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Oh, uh, like Dr. Hayek mentioned, I'm going to talk a little bit about our Precision Health Implementation Work Group and kind of how we're trying to help bring precision health discoveries to the bedside using things like translational science as well as implementation science. So I wanted to start with just some basics about the research output of the University of Michigan. So uh, uh, within the last little bit, uh, uh, the fiscal year 2023 data was released, and so uh, there were over $1.86 billion in total research expenditures, um, uh, over 1,900 new research awards, 580 new inventions, uh, 25 new startups, and then um, for the year 2022, nearly 19,000 research publications in academic journals. Um, and so I want to highlight this to kind of, first of all, show, you know, the, the excellence of the University of Michigan, but also to highlight that the last piece, the research publications, is really a key part of how we communicate findings to the field and kind of make things available to the world to use. Um, and so that's, it's important, but it's also important that we don't stop there. So it's not really the kind of end, end goal. Uh, we want to take that further and make sure things actually make their way to the bedside and to patients so that they can improve care. Um, and, and to kind of put a, put a finer point on this problem, um, so, so we know that overall, kind of in, in uh, uh, the field of science um, in total, that research discoveries don't often become a part of everyday practice. And for those that do, it takes an average of 17 years. And so this, is, this, is, this highlights a massive disconnect between this idea of having research findings out in the world and actually getting them into practice. Um, and, and this statistic is maybe not totally accurate for, for kind of every situation. We definitely do better than this sometimes. We could do worse than this sometimes. But it just it, it really kind of puts a, puts a clear idea around uh, uh, what, the, what the problem is. And, and so this is what precision health implementation is really thinking about and kind of trying to address through a few, few different ways. And so I'll, I'll, I'll talk about a few of those now. Um, and so for, for translational science, so, so th uh, this is one approach we use to understand the process of how things move from the bench or laboratory to the bedside. Um, and so just to kind of put a definition on this, uh, this is the study of the process of turning observations in the laboratory, clinic, and community into interventions that then improve the health of individuals and the public. Um, so there's really kind of three, three main steps to this. Uh, so first we have to develop new approaches, kind of uh, uh, have these research discoveries that happen. Um, then we have to demonstrate that they're useful and so that these things actually work to improve patient care. Um, then lastly, we have to disseminate the findings. So, so put things out into the world so that they're, they're actually usable and, and applicable. And uh, 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 this graphic from, from NIH really highlights the importance of uh, patient involvement and patient participa uh, participation in all of these aspects and kind of in, in, in all of these fields that we think about. Um, and so I'll, I'll highlight here that for, for translational science, this is a great way to understand the process and, and, and to think through the process. But it's, it, it doesn't necessarily take us all the way to kind of how do we improve this and make it better. Um, and so that's what brings me to implementation science. Um, and so this, this is a little bit of a, a, a slightly lesser known field. Um, so, so the idea here is to study and understand methods and strategies to improve the uptake of evidence-based practice and research in, into regular use by clinicians, practitioners, as well as policymakers. Um, and so uh, as a field, really the, the emphasis here is on, is on that word improve. So, so how do we make this process better? How do we think through systematic ways of, of kind of uh, approaching this? 
And, and this is probably my favorite implementation science graphic of all time, which is how do, you, how do we look at our peers and look at what other people are doing and figure out kind of the, the best way to do things. Um, and so, so a little bit about uh, precision health implementation. So we are one of the uh, uh, one of several work groups within precision health. Um, and so, so you see those at the bottom here. Um, so I'd want to highlight that precision health does does uh, uh, work on implementation, but this isn't in a vacuum. So this is a team effort with the other with the other work groups as well. And so that includes cohort development, data analytics, and IT, as well as education and training. Um, and then I wanted to mention our, our specific aim. And so, so with uh, precision health implementation, what we want to do is help researchers achieve integration of precision health discoveries into bedside patient care using these principles I just described. So, so using the principles of translational science as well as implementation science. Um, and so our two kind of primary current goals are focused on implementation of uh, predictive algorithms including those uh, developed using machine learning and artificial intelligence techniques, as well as genomic tools for clinical use in the hospital. Um, and the graphic on the right is it, probably a little difficult to see, but really just highlights that this is kind of an uh, 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 interconnected challenges and barriers that we have to overcome and think about. And so kind of at the bottom level, we have technical challenges. So how do we get things technically into the electronic health record? And kind of what are some, uh, uh, some approaches there? Um, and then kind of on top of that, we think a lot about governance. And so what are the best ways to implement things? And kind of what are the most ethical ways to implement things? And, and, and how do we make sure that that's always at the forefront? Um, and then lastly, health system factors. So thinking about things that really help at the health system level to, to make this easier. And, and I, I can think of precision health overall as a big, big kind of example of this, as being a champion of getting things from the, the bench to the bedside. Um, and then, so, so in terms of the predictive algorithms, so, so this is kind of one, one area we've had a lot of focus. Um, and, and just a little bit of background. So uh, these algorithms use past information to predict the occurrence of future events. And like I mentioned, these are, um, uh, it can be machine learning or artificial intelligence, generally going to be statistical or, or, or computational in nature. Um, but importantly, uh, how this actually makes it to the bedside in, in one way is that we can use uh, uh, these algorithms to derive clinical tools that then help clinicians understand patient risk. So kind of whether patients are at high or low risk of a specific uh, uh, health event. Um, and so our, our, our work group has done a few important things to help, to help with this process. Um, and, and in particular, I think we're, uh, 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 the implementation of about 20 machine, uh, machine learning models has been, has been successful or, or we've gotten them integrated. Um, and so that's great. Uh, and so kind of some of the specific things we did for that is to help research teams overcome various technical barriers and other challenges, uh, connect research teams with clinical leaders and other relevant interest groups. Uh, this one is especially important because it helps bring all the um, interested parties and those that are kind of have, have, a, uh, have a say or kind of have a, have a need for this, uh, uh, bringing everybody to the table. Um, and then lastly, assisting with the integration of, of algorithms so that they're readily available to clinicians, so that they're actually usable. Um, uh, in terms of genomics, so, so we've worked on a few, uh, uh, a few aspects of genomics tools. Um, I want to highlight one of those, um, which is, so, so it's, it's related to this idea that individuals might remove medications from their systems at different speeds depending on what genetic variants they have. So th this represents the field of pharmacogenomics. Um, uh, this is important because a lot of the drugs and medications we use, um, if, if they're not at the right dosage in the, in, in the blood, then, then that's, that's not really uh, uh, a, a kind of representation of, of, of good treatment. Um, and so, so we want to be really careful about uh, kind of how we're dosing patients with, with specific uh, genetic variants. I mean, so specifically for precision health implementation, um, we helped with implementation of a new module that improves accessibility of, uh, of this data, and particularly in this case for both patients and, and clinicians. And so, so this is important because this is what will allow both patients and clinicians to make adjustments to medications as needed. And so, so making sure that, that med uh, medication dosages are appropriate and that, and that things are working like they should. Um, and, and really what we helped with here was uh, connecting groups across campus, you know, kind of worked, worked with the kind of technical side of, of, of uh, uh, the genomics module and kind of understanding the clinical aspects, as well as uh, helping with some of these technical challenges as well again. Okay. So, so I want to highlight that 
uh, you know, this, the, uh, this is really a presentation of work that a lot of people have done. So this is, this is our team, which is shown here, and I want to thank everybody at, at Precision Health Implementation, but kind of also broadly at Precision Health, as well as across campus. This has been, this has been a massive effort and, and, and a big undertaking kind of across a bunch of different, uh, bunch of different work groups. And, uh, and especially for everyone here, I want to thank you for engaging in research and for, for helping to improve care. And, and this is a really, really great experience, or a, a great opportunity to get your thoughts and kind of hear a little bit more about what we can maybe change or kind of what we should be focusing on. So thank you very much.